Next problem in the high strength friction grip bolt. Let me read the problem. An ISA 110 by 110 by 10 mm carries a factor tensile force of 150 kilo Newton. It is an angle section, single angle section. It will carry a load of 150 kilo Newton. It is to be joined with a 10 mm thickness gusset plate. So they are going to join this angle section with a gusset plate. Uh, to resist a load of 150 kilo -newton. Design the joint using 20 mm diameter 8.8 .8 grade HSFG bolts uh, with the two conditions. First condition is no slip is permitted. Second condition is when slip is permitted. Assume the steel is FE410 grade. Okay. Let me start the first part of the problem. They are joining a 110 by 110 by 10 mm angle section with a gusset plate of n mm thickness to resist a force of 150 kilo Newton. We have to design the joint by using a 8.8 .8 grade HSFG bolts. For first condition, no slip is permitted. So, in that case, it will act like a friction type bolt. So, for the friction type bolt, we have to find out the slip resistance Vd SF equal to mu F N E K H capital F naught into 1 by gamma M F. This formula is obtained from the class 10.4.3 page number 76. Let me go to that page. This is the slip resistance 10.4.3 page number 76 okay. the formula is vd vd sf is equal to vns by gamma mf vns have yeah, they have given this formula so we can directly write as vd sf is equal to mu f n e k h capital f naught into 1 by gamma mf first we will see what is meant by mu f? Mu f is a coefficient of friction. Coefficient of friction that is a slip factor, also known as slip factor, as specified in table 20. If not given, means we can take mu f equal to 0 0.55. So in this problem, they didn't mention about the coefficient of friction. So let me let me take the value of mu f is equal to 0 0.55. Okay. So, here I am taking mu f equal to 0 0.55. Next term is N e. N e. What is meant by N e? Let us see what is meant. Number of effective interfaces offering frictional resistance to slip. Here the angle section is connected with the gusset plate. So, we are having only one interface will offer a frictional resistance to the slip. So, the N e is equal to 1. The next one is K h. K h depending upon the, the type of the hole. So, in this problem also they did not mention about that. Therefore, we can assume that fasteners are in clearance holes. Fasteners are in clearance holes means K h value is equal to 1. So, mu f is 0 0.55, N e is equal to 1, K h is also 1. Then coming to the gamma mf. Gamma mf for gamma mf they have given two values 1.1 that can be used if slip resistance is designated at service load. We can use 1.25 if slip resistance is designated at ultimate load. In this problem they have given the ultimate load of 150 kN. Therefore, we have to use the gamma mf value equal to 1.25. Then capital F naught is the minimum bolt tension or proof load at the installation that can be calculated by multiplying A and B into F naught small f naught. A and B is the net area of the bolt in threads that easily we can obtain that 0 0.78 into pi d squared by 4 where d is the diameter of the nominal diameter of the bolt. Small f naught that proof stress is 0 0.7 into F u b ultimate tensile strength of the bolt. Since we are using a 8.8 .8 grade bolt, the ultimate tensile strength is 800 mega Pascal. 
so small f not equal to 0 0.7 into 800 okay let me again go to the problem so cap a and b is 0 0.78 into pi d squared by 4 here they given the diameter of the bolt as 20 mm we got the a and b value also small f naught 0 0.7 into f u b since we are using 8.8 .8 grade bolt therefore that value is I have substituted as 800 so small f naught is 560 by multiplying this two a and b into small f naught I got the capital f naught value this much gamma m f is 1.25 since slip, uh, slip resistance is designated at, uh, at uh, ultimate load of 150 kilo Newton. So, multiplying sorry uh, substituting all the values in that equation see mu f n e mu f equal to 0 0.55 n e equal to 1 k h is also 1 capital F naught value and also gamma m f by dividing 1000 we can get the slip resistance as 60.53 kilo Newton for 1 bolt they asked to design the joint by using 8.8 .8 grade bolt now we have calculated the strength of the 1 bolt now we will find out the number of bolts required to resist the given force of 150 kilo Newton okay. so number of bolts required equal to the given force 150 divided by the slip resistance of the 1 bolt 60.53 we get the 2.47 we can't provide uh, exactly 2.47 let me round off to the nearest number as 3 so we can provide the 3 number of bolts of 8.8 .8 grade to resist the force of 150 kilo Newton. the first part of the problem is over second part of the problem when the slip is permitted if the slip is permitted means what will happen instead of the friction type bolt the bolt will act like a bearing type bolt bolt will act as a bearing type bolt. for bearing type bolts we have different failure modes that are shear failure and bearing failure other failures modes can be avoided by providing proper pitch and edge resistance so here we will find out the strength of the bearing type bolts of one number then after calculating that value we will calculate the number of bolts required equal to similarly the total load 150 divided by strength of the one bolt will give the number of bolts required first I will calculate the shear capacity of the bolt shear capacity VDSP equal to FU by root 3 and then ANB plus NSASB into gamma MP this formula is obtained from the class 10.3.3 .3 page 75 let me go to that page page number 75 75 so VDSP equal to uh, here, here VDSP equal to VNSP by gamma MP I can directly write as a VDSP equal to FE by root 3 NNA and B plus NSASP into 1 by gamma MP FU is the ultimate tensile strength of the bolt since we are using 8.8 .8 grade bolt FU is 800 N N number of shear planes uh, with the threads intercepting at shear plane n n n s so we are clear that we are having only one interface there is a possibility of occurrence of shear at only one plane therefore n equal to 1 next we have to see whether the shear plane is cutting the thread portion means you can put n n equal to 1 if the shear plane is cutting the sunk portion of the bolt means we have to put n s equal to 1 sir for the safer side we can assume that always the shear plane will pass through the threaded portion so i am keep the n n equal to 1 therefore n s equal to 0 then gamma m p gamma m p is the partial safety factor gamma m p is the partial safety factor that value can be obtained from the table table number uh, 5 page number 30 let me go to the table 5 page number 30 there they have provided the partial safety factor values for materials see table 5 
partial safety factor for materials gamma mp for bolts bearing type gamma mp bolts bearing type gamma mp is equal to 1.25 for both shock fabrication as well as for field fabrication okay so so n n equal to 1 a n b is equal to again 0 0.78 into pi d squared by 4 okay n s is 0 gamma mp is 1.25 from table 5 substituting all the values in this equation we can get the uh, shear capacity of the bolt as 90.776 kilo newton next we have to calculate the bearing capacity of the bolt for that we have to use the formula vdpp equal to 2.5 kp dt fu into 1 by gamma mp this formula can be obtained from the class 10.3.4 page number 75 again i will go to the page number 75 75 this is page number 75 to get the see hmm. bearing capacity of the bolt vd sp equal to 2.5 kp dt fu into 1 by gamma mp where kp is smaller of e by 3d naught comma p by 3d naught minus 0.25 comma fub by fu comma 1 uh, to substitute the values in this equations first we have to know the value of e end distance p pitch distance end distance e have a code have given a provisions to get the end distance values end distance e I can use that as E is equal to 1.7 D naught that is the minimum value that E value should be greater than or equal to 1.7 into D naught. D naught is the diameter of the hole as per the class 10.2.4.2 page number 74. Okay. Then pitch resistance P is equal to 2.5 times nominal diameter as per the class 10.2.2 page number 73. D naught is the diameter of the hole, uh, nominal diameter is 20, 20 plus 2, 22 mm. Okay. So, after uh, getting the, assuming the value suitably, 1.7 into 22, you will get the sudden value, we can round off to the value to 40 mm, 2.5 times 20 mm diameter is 50 mm. It is uh, already in rounded value, so let us use the pitch as 50 mm, resistance as 40 mm. So, here I will substitute all the values is E by 3 D naught comma P by 3 D naught minus 0.25 because D naught is the diameter of the hole that is 22, pitch P is 50 mm, edge resistance E is 40 mm, FUB is the ultimate tensile strength of the bolt that is 800 mm, FU is the ultimate tensile strength of the plate that is 410 mm. Then 1, the least among these 3 values is 0 0.5 is 0 0.7 that has to be used in that equation. So, 2.5 kp is 0 0.507 into d nominal diameter is 20 mm, t thickness, okay. thickness of the angle section because thickness of the angle section is 10 mm. The least among the 2 grades of the bolt and the plate sorry the angle is angle sections ultimate tensile strength is 410 uh, bolt is 800 so which will uh, crushed or bear uh, which will have a bearing failure plate obviously it is plate because its strength is lesser than the bolt strength so i am using 410 then gamma m MP is 1.25 substituting all the values I got the values 83.148 least among these three uh, two value 83.148 this is bearing strength value that VDSP value is 90.776 least among these two values is the strength of the one bolt that is 83.148 number of bolts required equal to 150 divided by 83.148 gives the 1.8 so I rounded to the nearest number 2 so design is over I will provide two numbers of 8.8 grade 20 mm diameter bolts to join the 
angle to gusset 